Good day, everybody. This is Paul talking. Uh, thank you for joining us, whether you're watching this live or via recording. Uh, today, Sil is going to be doing a best practice session for the Nissan Candle Scanner, specifically for the Ninja Trader platform. Uh, we're very excited, as always, uh, to be able to utilize our software. And what Sil is going to be doing today is some best practice is going to start out with some basic information uh, to make sure that everybody is up to speed and able to utilize the Nissan Candle Scanner. And then he's going to go into a little bit more information. You do have the ability to ask questions if you're here live. If you are watching this via recording, you can always send me an email with a question. My email address is paul at candlecharts.com. And if it's a question for Syl or anybody else on our team, I'd be more than happy to forward that on. So in addition to Syl handling uh, the technical support for our software at Nissan Candle Scanner, Syl is also a Nissan certified trainer, as you probably know already, uh, which means that he teaches on behalf of Steve a lot of times in a lot of our education, uh, a lot of our sessions over at our membership site at mycandlecharts.com. So although a lot of you already know Syl, realize Syl is a, an incredible resource, not only to help you assist you with Nissan Candle Scanner, but is also teaching you the best uses of candles in general. Uh, all of the resources available for installation, best practices, all of the other resources are already located inside of your account at candlechartsacademy.com. We do encourage you to do that. If you have not yet installed Candle Scanner or you're doing it again, please follow the directions that are there. Uh, we have both video and a PDF showing you how to do the installation. Uh, so if you follow those instructions, typically the installation works very fine. Um, so please do that. And you're not here to listen to me. I'm going to now turn my mic off and hand it over to Syl to take you through best practices of Nissan Candle Scanner for the Ninja Trader platform. So all yours. Thank you, Paul. I believe everybody can hear me just fine. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Some of you have probably been here before and have at least witnessed uh, some of this best practice. We've got a couple of videos. I'll show you this. We've already have a couple of videos already posted in the site, candlechartsacademy.com. So I will certainly refer back to that as well, just to show you, plus a table of contents that refers to a lot of the items. So we're not going to necessarily cover everything. We'll be looking at some key things today um, regarding Installation one, also just some key stuff regarding some of the charts and how to use. Remember that there's this and candle scan. I'm going to say right up front is it, it's not a it's not a program. Um, it's an indicator. So uh, an indicator meaning for those of you who are newer, an indicator is like a, a MACD or a Bollinger Band or for that matter, you know, like a volume indicator. It's an indicator on a chart. It doesn't run by itself. So you have to have something in the background, something else that's going to support it, which is a charting platform. Which in this case for us, it's going to be Ninja Trader. 8. So NinjaTrader 8 is going to be where your data comes from to populate a chart. And at that point, you can put whatever you want on your chart in terms of indicators. NCS, Nissan Candle Scanner, will be one of those indicators. So we'll just go through that together. So that's going to be something I'm going to make very clear because sometimes people want to just have NCS run by itself and they, you can't do that. You have to have something else giving you data, giving you a chart first. And then you can see the results. So, all right. So with that said, Again, welcome. And um, I'm going to change the screen. This is going to be a you know, web browser, web page. It doesn't really matter which browser you use as long as it works. But uh, Candle Charts Academy, if you have not purchased anything in terms of education and so on, um, then this is where you'd be going to find those resources. But chances are you are. The reason you are here is because you are a member or at least have purchased something, including and maybe interested in the NCS. So this is where you go. So if you have something purchased, then you've got a library. You can see here. Let me. Uh, yeah. So you see the library. So you, you log in. You've been given a login plus a password. You go into your library. At that point, you can find whatever resources you want, right? That you purchased. Only thing you'll see that's going to be accessible to you is going to be what you purchased. Otherwise, you may see other things that you might be interested in. So nonetheless, this is the main page. And then when you go in, you're going to be finding, of course, Ninja Trader that you purchased for the Nissan Candle Scanner. You'll have your license key present there. If it's not present, it's because it just hasn't been loaded yet. So it's, chances are it's been maybe overnight. Maybe you're in another 
time zone across overseas somewhere because we've got a lot of international members. And it's a matter of this has to be put in manually by us. It's not automated because it's a, obviously a very unique passcode. And then after that, you've got training materials. So if I scroll down, it's quite a bit. So I'll be spending a little time here as I come back, but you got training materials, you got one a video that walks you through the installation. This is the PDF I'll bring up here shortly as well. It gives you the step-by-step -step photographs, you know, pictures, if you will, um, including text to follow step-by-step. -step. Now, after that, you've got the installation files. There's two of them. Most people are getting this one. The second one you see here is because you have a particular program that you've purchased, which is the Mega Pack, the four volume series, in which case Steve Nissen himself will teach you things about the ADX and the ADX slope. So that's only for that because that includes the ADX slope indicator as long as, as well as the NCS. So um, if you don't know yet, then don't install. I mean, unless you know you got the mega pack. If you're not sure yet, then ask Paul, ask somebody if you own the mega pack. If you don't, then this is the one you got. If you do, then you can actually get the one below, right? So that's a common mistake. Well, it's not so common, but it's common enough where automatically folks make assumptions or they just pick whatever they want. They pick that one incorrectly. Nothing works. They wonder why. So I want to just make sure that save you some time on that installation part. So if I keep scrolling now, now you'll see there's a couple of videos here already. Um, yeah, I guess there's three of them. I thought there was two. So there we go. There's two of them. You'll see what 2017, 19, 19. There's a table of contents that will refer back to the very first one. This one might maybe the one of the more detailed ones. This one's pretty darn close, but the timing, of course, of the table of contents will not be coordinated with the others, but just one, which is this one. So you want to find something specifically regarding you know, the control menus, control center, the charting, um, highlighting versus the scanning portion of that indicator we have, alerts and so on, then you can actually find it very specifically. And uh, you see this Q&A at the end. So it went for a while, an hour and a half, almost two hours. I can't recall exactly how long it was, but um, this one is an hour 20, the other one's only an hour, 55 minutes, same thing with the other one. Like those are, it looks like they're, they're both the same copies. All right, so that from there, you can keep going down. There's various templates you can actually add on. You have another bonus training video. Some of these videos may go back to an older version of NinjaTrader, but still apply perfectly well. So just don't, don't be fearful to scroll down because there's plenty of stuff in here. Various other checklists, quick reference guides. That's a, essentially like a template to show you the abbreviation to what the candle pattern is. And then uh, we also just kept the Ninja Trader 7. Some people, there's a few out there that are still are using 7 um, rather than 8. But uh, I think 8 had some really nice added features that they put in a, few, a couple of years ago, which are nice to have. So, okay. So that's where that stuff is. From here, I will click on the installation guide. And essentially what you have now is a PDF version or file that you will go through step by step. So, uh, so if you already have NinjaTrader, then you just keep scrolling down, looking to install Nissan Candle Scanner itself. Otherwise, you are then looking to install Ninja first, then um, NCS. So you got to follow these steps. This has to be installed because if you install this first, it's got nowhere to go. It doesn't. It's it's an indicator. It's looking for a program like Ninja. And if it's not there, you'll get errors, right? So that's why step one before step two, makes sense? That's why you gotta go through that step. And then again, you've got your indicator, two indicator versions, the standard one, the one with the ADX slope, it says so right there. So once that's done, which is, you know, this NCS, like I said, it's just a simple file. So it takes seconds to go through. But again, you have to have Ninja, on there first, right? So with Ninja, I'll just point out, uh, they made some changes you know, off and on with time and uh, it was pretty simple in the past. Now they have now started a new brokerage firm as well. So you'd love to have their people um, sign up for a brokerage for data to have their actual, do your trading accounts. So maybe either trade right off the chart or even separately, but they'd like to have you do that. 
you're not you're not obligated. It's a it's a free program. We'll call a simulation uh, or a demo for that matter. Um, there's no expiration on it. You can use it forever. It's free, but you can buy licensed versions, which will allow you to have more than one broker. For instance, you can actually trade off the chart versus not. So that's the, the minor differences. So um, have no fear there. You can keep it free for all, as long as you'd like. That's really the only differences. Uh, so I guess I'm going to try not to answer too many questions right away, but Sylvia's already asking a decent question. So if we need to download, and you say need, I guess I'm not sure what your need would be. If we need to download the latest version of NinjaTrader, so the latest versions, they have new versions of eight all the time, right? They update and update and update. So there's versions of eight that occur frequently. Now, the difference between seven and eight, that's an upgrade perhaps. Um, so I guess it depends on what your question really is here. If you're going from seven to eight, then yes, the, the NCS, because of the programming changes they made at Ninja, uh, it's a different version. So there's actually four NCSs, two of them for seven and two of them for eight. Right, so um, you have an older version of what, Sylvia? Seven, Ninja Trader Seven, or an, an older version of Ninja Trader Eight? So that's the difference. So if you uh, have an older version of Eight, then no, you don't have to reinstall NCS. If you're going from Seven to Eight, then yes, you will. You will have to. Uh, they're going to be completely separate programs. They can run, uh, so, but you'll have to, to to install NCS all over again. But it's not again seconds. That's all it takes. And so if you're going from seven to eight and you choose to do that, then you'll have to um, install NCS for NinjaTrader 8, which is different than NCS for NinjaTrader 7. Now, keep in mind, if you've got templates and various things of that order, you, 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 some things will transfer over and some things will not. So, you, so be sure you don't have all kinds of amazing, hardworking various templates or things that you've made that will, uh, you want them transferred over, they may not. So it'll tell you when you upgrade to eight, whether, um, you know, what, what you could cross over to eight from seven versus not. So hopefully it works for you. Um, okay, so from here, uh, as you scroll down, you can see, again, the versions to choose from once Ninja is in. And then from there, this just continues to go through the installation of uh, changing the skin color because since the text is uh, in black for the abbreviations or the full text for the actual highlighting of the identification of the candle patterns themselves on the chart, it's black lettering and it can't be changed. So you have to have a lighter background to see the lettering. So if you keep the back black background, then um, you won't see the lettering. So you won't be able to identify anything. So that's where some of the, I, the uh, procedures and the uh, instructions here to tell you what to do, going on and on, how to open up a chart, uh, and so on, how to open up the market analyzer, how to add indicators to your chart. It just goes on. There's 19 pages here. Uh, trying to make it as simple and as straightforward as possible throughout. Um, so again, there's your stuff that you can visually see, stop at any page you want, including the video, as I mentioned earlier, that um, will, there's this video here, plus the best practice video that has a table of contents. So you've got resources here at your disposal to better understand what's going on. Now, in terms of the Ninja, downloading it, ninjatrader.com, pretty simple. Uh, there's the brokerage stuff there. You have the platform there. And uh, see, pricing is always free, it says at the bottom there. So it depends on what kind of account you want versus not. Uh, they also have resources once you're in on connection. So most people will have access to a free end of day. If you want to trade live charts with live, you know, live data, then you would then need a live feed. Many people are using their own. There's only a few that will be partnered up. Uh, TD Ameritrade is one of them, for instance. Uh, E-Trade, I believe, is another. And there's more that are listed, but certainly they have connection guides to tell you how to connect uh, your data to Ninja. Like I said, they only have certain partners there. It won't be everything, so keep that in mind. Now, in terms of the NCS itself, remember, NCS is only 
uh, as well, partnered with certain companies and certain charting platforms. So it will only be used on, say, Ninja, uh, TradeStation. Uh, it will also be a slightly different version of that would be on um, MT4, Forex, it's a Forex platform, et cetera. So Paul can help you with a lot of those things there, but uh, we cannot then just put NCS anywhere. It's an indicator, as I mentioned, so it has to be programmed specifically or at least uh, compatible with those platforms. All right, so this is the Ninja thing. Uh, like I said, all the resources are there. They have a ton of videos on your alerting and so on and so on, how to use the platform itself, tons. They have a, their own YouTube channel, so it can be easily found through Googling them or directly through their site. So anything Ninja Trader, probably best to go there because they've got it covered, including, including so they still have live sessions as far as I know. You can attend something live at some point if you want to um, and be able to participate live or just go to one of the recordings to get more detailed information on how to use their platform to their capacity that perhaps you'd like, okay? Uh, let's see what else is there. Um, so Kinetic is also con con you know, um, associated, affiliated with Ninja. This is their own data that they are providing as well. So you can have a subscription for live data here and you can customize this any way you want. You can um, do just futures, you can do some Forex in here, you can do uh, pink sheets, you can do all kinds of things. And you can, so you're, you guys, you customize, you pay this or you pay you know, more, little or less. There's a, there's a basic dollar amount you're going to be paying. Um, and then as you add on more, then you're paying a little more. So I think it's pretty reasonable fees. If you don't have a broker that's a partner, um, or maybe consider a different platform altogether. So there's different ways to go about things. And I guess the one thing is if you're, if you have your current platform and it's, uh, you can't add NCS to it or, or the data itself of your brokerage cannot be added to Ninja, then I suppose what you could do is keep your brokerage, keep your chart there, use a free version of Ninja to have NCS running on it so that you can see the candle patterns and you flip back over to your brokerage account and execute your trades that way. So you'll be doing some comparisons at some point if you do it that way as well. If you have a chart of candle patterns, et cetera, on your platform, your, your brokerage platform, then you do comparisons on the Ninja platform with the NCS. So you can see the candle patterns and learn as well. So the NCS can be done for and used for lots of things. One is highlighting so you can identify where on the chart they are. Two, you know, better understand which candle is which, engulfing versus an evening star, morning star, et cetera. So you, that's what I originally got it for, was to really learn and understand the candle pattern, which one were they, where did they occur, how did they occur, what were the variations and differences. And um, that's how I use it first. And then as you graduate to something bigger, better, then you perhaps use it as a scanning tool. So you put it in the market analyzer, you can scan, say, 50 stocks, to look, looking for opportunities there. Uh, we'll be discussing some of those opportunities and things like that next week. We'll be doing a, a special webcast as well where we'll be looking at examples of that, looking to drill down, for instance, some scans into what may or may not be necessarily a, uh, an opportunity, okay? So uh, this is the Kinetic side. Again, they've got partners for data. This is their version of it that you can subscribe to if you'd like. Uh, we have no affiliation to this. Just for full disclosure, we have no affiliations to any of their products. We don't make any money on any of this stuff. So it's just theirs. And I, that's what I use because I just found it easy and more simpler to use. So um, I thought the fees were quite reasonable for what I needed and wanted. Okay. So we've covered the, this. We've covered a Ninja, their, their site, the resources they've got. Also the installation, which I think needed to be done just to get people started. Some people aren't just not quite computer savvy. They're just not quite sure what to do. Other people generally may install things for them, but I tried to make this as simple as possible, but essentially just follow the steps. And I think the steps are clear enough to follow through. Always remember your Candle Charts Academy site in terms of what you own. Any resources, again, regarding NCS, for instance, will be here. And uh, all the videos are here for your pleasure, viewing, browsing, et cetera. And then any other questions, always go back to Paul. He's a tremendous resource for everybody there as well, okay? So with that, let's move on to something else. So we're gonna clear screen and we can then look at maybe a chart, 
something like that, whatever. So I guess for starters, if I bring in the, this is what's going to happen when you first load Ninja, right? You're going to end up, this Ninja Trader 8, by the way, you're going to have um, this control center. From here, this is where you would open a new chart. You would, the market analyzer is there as well for, you know, it's a table essentially for scanning purposes. You can use it for all kinds of things. Um, so that's the starting point. Workspaces, well, workspaces is essentially what you're going to be viewing on the screen. Whatever you've created, have you created three charts, one chart, 15 charts, you know, five charts and two market analyzers? You know, what do you have? What's going to be the your workspace every time you open up your computer? And what's going to be on your screen? Do you have one screen, five screens? You may want to have all kinds of multitudes. And that's what you, so you're building something. That's your workspace. I got a ton of examples. This is stuff that was to play with, to try out for various other things, including uh, students and whatever else. So uh, I've kept them there just for the sake of keeping them there. Uh, sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't, but they have different configurations. So um, I'll sh I can certainly show you some of those, but I have right now, since there's two of them open right now, one's in the background and the other one's in the foreground, which I have is called best practice preview or review for that matter. When I do the recap, for instance, you'll see at the bottom the recap when I do strategy session, this is where I do when I do Forex, it's all here, okay? That's why I just switch back and forth when I do my videos for educational purposes versus when I do live events, I can change things around and have different kinds of configurations at my disposal very, very quickly. Connections, it's gonna be essentially what are you connected to? This is your data. Like I said, your free end of day comes with the program. I purchased and have live data with Kinetic which I've created, put it up here as well. And I also have a futures um, account with them through their brokerage firm as well. So I use that as part of their data, part of the backup data. So I have them both connected. My primary is Kinetic. The backup is the futures on the back end that Kinetic doesn't provide for me. They, they do. Um, okay. Outside of that, tools, well, depends on what you're looking for. You can create instrument lists here. You can create a list of five, you can create a list of 25, 100, whatever you want, your, maybe your favorite stocks, but you can create a list here, add them all in, and then you have them at your disposal anytime. You can load them that you know quite rapidly then at that point into your market analyzer. So if you want to scan your best main 100 stocks, boom, they, they get entered into that market analyzer very quickly. I'll show you how that's done. There's other things in here that are, are, may or may not be used. If you're trading off your screen, if you've got a brokerage account, and of course, your commissions, et cetera, all these things can be calculated and um, make you know, change your preferences here. But a lot of the stuff you don't ever use, uh, maybe the options menu, perhaps or some other in ter terms of the trading hours and other things, your simulation account that you want to maybe trade off of for practice to see how you're doing, to see if you're making money. You can actually change the account size, start over again with a new account various things okay the main thing that i think you're going to end up using here is going to be the, the new button primarily for charts market analyzers maybe a few other things here certainly the tools possibly in terms of instruments naturally workspaces yes for sure connections yes for sure uh, that's about it help well you got help guides in here you can email support at ninja that's how to contact them etc so that's about it uh that's your control center and that's how things are started anyway. And then from there, we can look at, say, a chart. So from we open up a chart that's new. Let me see what I got here in terms of something I can bring up that's fairly clean. I got some in the background already. You know, there's one right there. Okay. So um, just a, you know, regular chart. I put it full screen for now. And I also have the NCS already plugged in. It's already installed. As you can see, the abbreviations, if I really zoom in tight here, Right, what do you see? You see a plus E, which is bullish engulfing. So plus would mean bullish versus negative, meaning bearish, right? So you'll see those at the top of the candle instead. So here's a bullish engulfing. There's another bullish engulfing. Uh, and it's, so it's gonna be, and the blue arrow is just pointing to it. That's all that is. And, and this, by the way, again, these are not like automatic buy signals. These are just simply identifying for you a, um, proven, if you will, right, defined candle pattern. It's a Japanese candle pattern. And, so, you know, these are all Steve's favorites, essentially, put into this indicator. So they're just there to identify for you, one, again, for educational purposes, so you understand what they look like, how to identify them on your own, 
but also you at that point have to decide, is it a trading opportunity or not? Okay, so that's gonna be on you based on your education, based on your understanding. So again, so if I scroll back to left to right, you have a doji formation, for instance, right here, right? Doji right there again, another doji there, piercing candle there, bull sash formation there, high wave over here, bearish engulfing over here, and so on. Hotomy to your far right, I just circled it. So those are all the abbreviations. Now you can change this if you wish to full text. And that's what I did initially as well when I first got this, because I didn't quite know the abbreviations and I didn't want to have to re try to remember because I wasn't familiar with the terms either. Sash formation, engulfing, for instance, piercing, dark cloud cover, did, didn't know the, the, the language, right? So I, I had everything in abbreviated, uh, probably from abbreviation form to full text form. And I'm trying to see if I thought I had an example already built. Let me see here. Maybe I don't. I guess not. Okay, that's fine. So pretty easy. Right click, go to your indicators listing. This is how you put it on to begin with. Take it off. So when you go to indicators, you're going to see this in channel scanner here at the top. Now you'll see that I have the ADX slope here at the top as well. It's because I have the I have access to the mega pack, so consequently I have the ADX slope. Uh, so there's a this in channel scanner. We put it at the top just so that you don't have to worry about it alphabetically. That's what you choose. You put it into the configuration. Once it's in there, once it's highlighted, the right side now tells you all the candles. Then you can choose which ones are going to appear. That's how that starts. So I've got yeses right now for everything. Um, so you can also then choose and select all of them to turn them all off. Because if you only want like one or two of them, then it'd be kind of cumbersome to go through each line one by one by one. That's the starting point there, right? Uh, so that could all be eliminated or not, and then added one at a time. And then you've got, um, they change the way this looks sometimes, and so sometimes I can't always find it where I want to find it. And my eyes are going bad too, so here we go. Well. Wow, my eyes are really bad. Clearly. Oh, there's right there. Use pattern revisions. I'm always so used to Ninja Trader 7 still. It's in a different spot, but there it is. So display, use patterns. It's there's a check mark right there. Okay, so it's at the very bottom of all the candles. If I uncheck it and I click apply, you'll now see the full text. See that? Let me do that. And then we can zoom in again. And then you're going to see bullish engulfing, bull sash, doji, rising window. So there's a space between the high and the low here, a little window, a little gap. There's your bear how to be to the right, when I circled again, and so on. So the, you can go abbreviation or full text, and it's going to be based on which candles you've chosen again in that indicators panel. So if I go here, click on NCS on the bottom left, it highlights on the right, and then I can pick and choose what I want at that point. Make sense? Let's go back to uh, adding the abbreviation once again. And then here you can, of course, um, a couple things. First part would be Ninja comes already preloaded with this right here, but that's not us, right? You can use that if you like, but it's not the same. Not the same. So don't go there thinking it's ours, it's because it's not. We are right there at the top. And then all the other indicators available are listed that you can add to your charts. So you can at your leisure, at your pleasure, whatever you want. Uh, if it's not there, guess what? It's not there. You, there's no access to it. They do make some uh, uh, like other versions that you can actually get on off their site, people that were other people, they're called ninja scripts essentially. Uh, other indicators based on that, based on the programming. So other people may have created something that may be accessible for free or for purchase that you may be looking for as well. So that's the indicators window, the, the, the candles, the abbreviations, which ones to choose from. And this is purely for the chart only, right? In terms of what you're gonna put on your chart to highlight, what we call highlighting the chart. Make sense? Okay, so after that, you can always add more indicators as I mentioned. 
you know, I've got one here where, let's see here, and I want that. Where's the, uh, nope, 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 nope. There we go. I'm just going to turn that off on the right. So there's a smaller chart, but you can size it all you want. There's other indicators. You know, this is pretty much classic of what I would use, say, for instance, for the da uh, daily recap every day. Um, so Bollinger Bands, moving averages, right? Uh, MACD here, stochastics, volume. So these have been added in with no NCS, but multitude of things can be added in, not added in. You can actually, in whatever order you want, you can have the stochastic on top, from the bottom, whatever you want. But that's how that's done as well. Okay. In terms of a chart, let me go back and resize this again. Uh, yeah. So let me do that, and then I'm going to show you. This is, you know, of course, I'm going to show you some Ninja Trader stuff, but some NCS stuff, of course, as well. So from a Ninja Trader standpoint, um, to change the symbol, you can see I've got weekly, and this is right now an old contract in the upper left-hand corner here, an old contract uh, of the uh, Dow Jones, but it's a weekly chart. So you could certainly use the drop-down menu if you wanted to, but you can just as easily type. As, as long as this, you've clicked inside this window, and it's a live window. Uh, you just type. So I could type, you know, ES and then 0620, which is a current contract right now live as we speak. So I can do that. I press enter on my keyboard and then lo and behold, there the chart loads. I can change the time frame as well from weekly to daily. So I go one day, one D. I want to go monthly, one MO. I mean, all these things are actually found in here as well. So, you know, there's, there's, it's, you can click here if you like, but there's ways to figure out, you know, the faster way versus a slower way. So you can change the chart, the, the instrument this way manually or with a drop down menu. Same thing with some of the menu items at the top. You've got drawing tools, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but there's also fast keys, like a drawing tool. You can see all the fast keys by control keys and F keys and so on, whatever you want there. Um, so that's easy enough. So if you want to draw a box, control F12, and you can configure these things to different colors, different sizes, borders, all kinds of things as well. So that's all kind of fun. <clears throat> Trend lines F2, straight lines F6, all the way across the screen. F7 is vertical. So, and you can change the color as I said, the thickness, whatever you like, if it's dashed, straight. Whatever. So, you all kinds of options and variables to do things as well in terms of the chart. Okay. Uh, what else can I possibly talk about on the chart here? So, we have the abbreviations, we have the current e mini SP futures contract on your screen right now based on a monthly chart. I can go to a daily chart as, as we said earlier. You can do whatever you like on these things. Okay. Uh, what else? That's about it, I think. Not much. So um, the market analyzer now. So I mentioned earlier about a, a watch list. So, so for you to like say screen through, just if you got five or six, maybe 10 stocks, not that you're much of you're screening them for, for candle pattern just yet, but maybe you're just looking at them. You just want to visually look at them, but you don't have to type them every time. So what you would do is bring in a market analyzer window. So, so again, you'd start that up by your control center, click new, Market Analyzer. Now, a new one I will show you looks a little different than this, but not by much. A new one, oops, darn it. There it is. A new one will have the four columns defaulted. And the instrument will always remain. That one you can't remove. But the asking price, bid price, and last name, or last price, pardon me, is always defaulted. You can either just left click and hold that and grab it and throw it out like that, or you can right click on the window and go to columns, in which case then you're um, choosing bid price at the bottom and removing it. Removing it, you can change the order if you'd like. Now you see there's only instrument left. This is where now you want to add, say, NCS. Well, and that's, it's not called NCS. Don't get fooled by that. It's called Candle Chart Scanner, right there. Okay, so you would click, left click once and add it, or double click and it gets 
put in here. So double click. And you can put more than one if you'd like. That's that's two columns. I can always do it again and add three columns and four columns. And so why would I even consider doing that? Well, you might have one column, for instance, that is um, a weekly chart based on weekly candles versus daily candles, maybe versus a 60-minute candle, so whatever you want. I would suggest then that you rename them, which you can do on the right-hand side. So once I highlight it, I can go to the right-hand side and give it a new name. You'll see that right here is the name, the label. All you gotta do is just type in, change the name to something else. In which case then you can have, again, multiple columns or just two columns, whatever you, whatever you like. So that's purely up to you. We'll leave just two for now and we'll leave it by its original name. And um, just like we do on the left, the current one on the left side now. So I'm just gonna close this out now like that. Now we have this one here. So now what, why did I do this? Well, one, I may be scanning something, but to say this is my favorite group of stocks, this happens to be the Dow Jones. I can then link this list up to a chart. So let me bring up that chart that we had before. Where is that thing? That is, yep, that's it. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so we can see everything together like that. So the fun thing about this is, you know, you can now link the market analyzer to the chart, meaning that if I click on one of the, in, the instrument names or symbols, it'll automatically load the chart, right? So in the upper right-hand corner here, you see there's a box that I just highlighted, it says instrument link. So you're linking that instrument to the chart. So just click on that, pick a color, pick any color you want. You see on the chart right now, I've got this gold color, which says instrument link as well. So if we do go that same orange gold color like that, so now when I go click on uh, Nike or Microsoft, for instance, it loads Microsoft. So you can literally just start at the top at Apple. You can click on it with your mouse or you can just use your arrow key on your keyboard and just like scroll down. And that way you can quickly go through charts at a glance and see what's up. All right, so now of course it'll be on the time frame that you currently have, which is daily. Now you could also have two charts up at the same time. So for instance, if I do this and have another chart like I did earlier, maybe ones with indicators, maybe ones without indicators, just whatever you want. It's your, it's, your, it's your thing. So now if I also then link this one up to the same color, but I'll make this one instead a weekly chart, right? So now they're both connected to that symbol. So I go back to Nike, they'll both load one daily, one weekly. Cool. And that way you can see a different perspective. And then again, as I said earlier, you have the candle chart scanner, the NCS, one call may be weekly, one call may be daily. And that way you're looking at everything all at the same time. So that's how that would be done. Um, excuse me. Uh, wow. Well. Interesting. Um, okay, so that's how that's done there. Now, the other cool thing that NinjaTrader 7 does not have, but in 8 does, is the, the tab feature, which I thought was pretty cool. Meaning this, so right here at the bottom, there's a tab, and they all have tabs. You could choose to have the tab showing or choose to not have the tab showing, in which case, this one does not have the tab showing. So if you simply just like right click on it, so I can rename, give it a new name if I want. I can duplicate it, create another tab, or I can create a new window based on that tab as well, right? Um, so that's, a, or a plus sign as well, will give me a new tab. So why would I do that? Well, again, you could have multiple instruments in here as well. I could have the Nike, Microsoft if I want. I could do whatever else I want. I could make it different time frames. I could make this one the daily, I could make the next tab the weekly. It's however and whatever your imagination can provide you. Um, you can link them, interlink them. It could be an intraday chart set. It could be the, that could be the daily, it could be a 60 minute chart. It could be a completely different chart. So it's whatever you want. But the tabs are cool because you have a lot more flexibility. Instead of having a bunch of windows open, you'd have one window open, but access to multiple charts, multiple instruments at the same time. So I think that's kind of cool to have. That's kind of neat. So that's how that works there. Uh, I think that's some of the main things really that's gonna be useful to get you started for those that are new at this point, um, 
having gone into this almost at least 30 minutes in so far. I mean, some of the main features I want to cover right off the bat was making sure that folks were installing correctly, getting to the right resources, going back to the videos, going back to the uh, installation guide, et cetera, to, to find the resources they're looking for. If they want to scan, that's what you'll do, and so on. So again, back to the instrument list, I suppose, at this point as well. So let me, um, I'm going to unlink this real quick. Uh, it's just faster and easier to try to delete all of this. Right now you're seeing bullish engulfings, and so this can be, let me just go in here to columns, because you can set this in terms of when are you scanning this for. The traditional way is just to look at, you know, one day back. In other words, you, if you scan it once a day, say end of the day, or first thing in the morning before the market opens, you're going to see the most recent candles, like right now. On a weekly chart, it'll be, you know, the week. For the daily chart, it will be obviously you know, the previous day, right? So that's how that would work out. Um, and so click on the candle chart scanner again on the bottom left, and now you've got the, uh, right at the top here is where it says look back. So again, the instructions are all there. We have the videos to talk about this as well, but this is gonna tell you that right now it's default, it's looking back at one candle, it's looking one back, simple as that. You can change some of these things if you want to send out the additional filters, that's up to you, that's on, that's on you. So that's how that could be done. If you want to look at a multitude of maybe the last two or three days, then you could change the look back. Experiment with this sort of thing, see what works for you. If you know exactly what you want, then you can set it up. If you're not sure what's going to work for you, then this is where you can experiment with things and play around to see what kind, what yields from this. Okay. Uh, I think one of the things I really forgot primarily would be the candle patterns again at the very beginning in terms of highlighting, but also the scanning. So uh, let me go back into the chart, for instance, go back to in indicators. And uh, this in candle scanner is already chosen. So I said earlier, you can click on, um, where is it? Uh, choosing them all versus not, right? Um, so right here, select all versus not. All filters, yes, all filters. It says strict versus no. So in other words, if I just pick one of these, like I'll pick, um, I'll go up to the top and pick hammer. So my choices are no, yes, and strict. So for those who aren't familiar with strict, it's a, just a um, refined definition of what that candle pattern represents. And it will definitely filter down the number of candles that you see on your screen. I've seen sometimes as many as maybe even 80% of them go away because it's a, I guess you could call it more powerful. It's just a more refined definition. Bullish engulfing is probably one of the best examples of that. The traditional bullish engulfing, the body, right, of the candle pattern engulfs the prior body of the candle. So the open and close are outside of the open and close of the previous session. In a strict pattern, the open and close is above and below the high and the low. It engulfs completely the previous candle. So imagine that's a very likely a more powerful candle because the range by itself is much larger, but the body itself engulfs the whole candle versus just the body. Make sense? So you can choose again on the chart to identify strict versus not versus just standard, but you can also do it in the scanner as well. So sometimes when you have a multitude of, uh, say you've got say 200 instruments that you want to scan and you've got 150 choices, that might be a little too much. So maybe you drill down to some of your favorite stocks and or maybe the strict patterns and that might drill down to a much smaller population of instruments to look at. And at that point, since you're linked up, you just start filtering through, click, 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 and start visually looking at those charts done that way. Make sense? So that's uh, the other feature of, of the, that's, that's an upgrade that we did. I can't remember. It's been a while, it's been a while already. That's strict. It's been several years. There's been nothing else updated since. Um, there's nothing to change because the candle patterns are the candle patterns. There's nothing new there. Okay. Uh, all right. So let me see. That's that, 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 that. We've done the scanning, uh, or at least uh, I guess I'm going to do a live scan. So let me do an instrument list. Let me just delete. I just All I did was click at the top, and then now I'm pressing my delete button. I'm just holding it down and everything just goes away. Now I've got nothing populated. So here again, the tab set, uh, feature, you can do again, multiple tabs. 
So why would you do that? Well, maybe you've got multiple different scans. Maybe one scan is going to be bullish engulfing only. Maybe another one's going to be hammer only. Maybe it's the bouncing ball. Maybe one scan really actually has everything. It's got you know the ones that you're your favorites. Um, maybe the other ones are experimental. It's whatever you want again. So the tabs are cool because they can all just be um, intermixed. The only thing I'm going to just warn you of is that uh, this program Ninja is resident on your computer. So if you've got, you know, six different scans on here, they're they're all going to be running at the same time. They're all going to be running in the background. So that could slow down your computer. So just be aware of that. Um, but the cool thing about having to re, you know, load this again and again and again, if you don't want it to slow down, is that you can create templates. So once you have something created in terms of a scan including even on your charts if you have a look of your chart that you like every single time you can create a template so or save it as a template you right click on the chart for instance go down to templates at the bottom and you'll save it as you'll create a name for it so then every time you load up a blank chart you can load the template and it'll come up with all your indicators that you want at that time same thing with the market analyzer you can load a template uh, for instance you'll see there's a whole multitude of uh, some more for fun, some more for trial, some more just for visual, but the, you can do, you know, like the bouncing balls in there. Um, I did an active trader back in the day when we did a, uh, a new course, for instance, that's part of that as well. I got just Doji and Windows, for instance, just hammers, all the NCS, NCS with stochastics. I mean, there's all kinds of combinations you can do, overbought, oversold. So, this is stuff that you would play with. I have a strict versus the standard original, right? So it's all there. Um, you just click on it and it loads automatically. And if you saved it with a instrument list, the instrument list will show up as well. So it depends on how you set that up and how you save it, okay? So um, simple enough. So that's how that's done both on the chart and on the market analyzer. Again, so if I want to add a list again to this, uh, let's actually go to the column first. I want to, I can't remember what I put in here in terms of, I guess it was everything, right? Yeah, it was all yeses. That's right. I forgot. There we go. So now instrument list, you right click. So if you've made a list already, you'll have it to choose from. If you haven't, then, you know, once you do it, it'll be visible later. The top add instruments. Now you've got individual ones that we just clicked on recently. Those are the most recent ones that we looked at that are right there. You can also pin them. Uh, here are your different lists now. I created a blockchain. I got a recap one, right? The DAX 30, Dow 30. I got a Forex listing. For, that's a small listing. Some of these are defaulted. Some of these are cre I created as well. Um, indexes, so like I said, some of these are already there. NASDAQ 100, uh, the Russell. S&P, et cetera. So some will be there, some will not. Some you, you'll create on your own, okay? So once you do that, like say for I wanna go back to the, the Dow, uh, and now it says select all, or I can individually select one if I want, okay? So um, let's do blockchain, let's select them all, and there they show up there. If I relink again with the, uh, gold, it automatically scans as I showed you before. It's got rising windows on, this is the Bitcoin ETF. Oh, that's, that's the wrong color. That would work if I used the right one, orange, not gold. There we go. And see it lows there with the daily on top, weekly on the bottom, etc. So that's done that way. So that's how you do watch list and scanning at the same time or whatever you want. And as I said, you can do create new tabs at the bottom for both charts and for the market analyzer for various choices. So if I could create another tab at the bottom, you'll see that again, there are the four defaulted columns. I can manually change it by clicking on columns or I can go to the template and choose something else. Load, let me do, I think, some of these might be some of the older ones that did not translate or transfer over from seven. I don't remember. Yeah, so this one I never rebuilt because it's an old NinjaTrader 7 version that I never rebuilt, so it doesn't work. 
I quite honestly do not remember which ones do. Strict original probably does. There it goes. So I have standard and strict columns. And then if I add an instrument list to this, you will then see, let's go with, um, let's go with a big list. NASDAQ 100, and let's select them all at the very top. So this could be a little cumbersome because it's gonna like load them all and start scanning right away. And it's gonna be a little bit slow at times. You can see it's taking even a while to even load. Because bandwidth is being used up already. Computer resources are being used up already. Um, so anyway, that's possible, right? There's also, I'm just gonna refer back, it's rather than go into a lot of the alerting, alerting can be useful, but sometimes I find that you're already in front of your screen, your computer screen anyway, and things seem to be faster, easier to just look at it yourself. But some people insist that you want alerts because they're either in the kitchen somewhere and they're, you know, I guess if you're getting alerts and you need to run from the kitchen to your computer that fast, uh, you must be day trading. So um, that would swear it could be useful. Some people like to be alerted, say on their phone, which can be done as well. That's a little more cumbersome, but also a little more time consuming, but it can be done off a chart, but it can also be done off the market analyzer. That's the other one of the big features that Ninja Trader 8 has is that the alerts are now done on charts as well as the market analyzer. So um, yeah, things are running a little, obviously very slow right now because I've got two scans running with like essentially a um, hundred stocks. Not ideal, even though I've got a pretty decent strong computer. It looks like it's just completely jammed and yeah, I'm looking at the lights on it, it's like stuck. There we go. Now it's, now it's finally lighting up. There we go. So now you're seeing that on the left hand side. So if I scroll down, you're going to see there's a lot more standard than there are strict, right? And as, as I said originally 20%, this is like there's only two of them showing up versus a whole bunch of other ones, right? So big difference. Now, interestingly, the strict and the standard showed up right here for the Morning Star, but that's because th there's no difference between the two. There's definitions for strict for most of them, but not all of them. All right, so in this case, you can see Dollar Tree, there's a hammer and bull hotame for standard, but only a bull hotame for the strict. So this one, of course, we didn't link yet, so we'll link it now. Same color, and we click on that Dollar Tree. Now Dollar Tree shows up, and um, there's your combination. It shows the combination on the right hand side here of both a hammer and hotami. Because the chart now, remember the chart's set up on its own, it's independent of the market analyzer. That's another question I've had many times. They go, somebody's like, they're clicking on, they, they have their daily chart up, and they're seeing a hammer and they do a scan on the market analyzer, and they're not seeing the same thing. Well, that's because you didn't configure your market analyzer to be a daily chart scan. That's a common mistake. So when I go click on standard, for instance, um, there's a choice for what time frame you're gonna be looking for, right? So right here, data series, and then type day. The default for Ninja is minute. So if you don't pay attention to that, you're gonna have a one minute scan going on the left-hand side and a daily chart on your screen, on your chart itself. So um, they, won't, they won't sync up. That's a common one as well, error that is. So be aware that you wanna see the same thing, then make sure that you're actually reading the same thing. So I accidentally, I guess, clicked on Apple. So we're back to Dollar Tree, and there it is, right? So one's a daily chart above. The weekly chart, of course, below is not going to have anything. It doesn't have anything highly because I don't have NCS on it, but also we didn't do a scan for a weekly chart either, right? So, okay. So that's, I think, can summarize a lot of things. Alerts, as I mentioned earlier, can be done on the chart. Right click. Uh, you got alerts right here. And then, but you have to configure this. You have to create conditions and so on. Um, it's not super hard, but you have to understand the language a little bit. So I think it's best to refer back to their videos, quite frankly. And then ultimately, to make it work, you have to then enable it as well. At the very top there, it's already pre-enabled. So maybe you just don't enable it initially, but once you do enable it, 
it will be ready to go to trigger any alerts that you have. Uh, probably the other common error there is that you also need an alert log for the alert to show up in. So that's also then in the control center, new, open a new alert log window. And so somehow I created some some alert along the way somewhere, somewhere on some, I don't know where it is, I can't find it, but it refers me back to another workspace, which isn't even open right now, but yet it's pulling, pulling the data out of there anyway. So um, I gotta find it so I can turn it off. But nonetheless, there it is. So it's still, plus you can have sound, as I showed you before, you can do sound here. You can also set up to go somewhere else. I'll show you, like for instance, if I open this up again, alerts, you can, um, the actions, when you add an action, you can have it play a sound, share a message, um, pop-up dialogue, you can submit an order as well. There's, you send an email, various things like that, okay? You just have to define what it is that you're looking for and then it will do it for you. So it's done here, as I said, but also in the um, market analyzer as well. Similar window, similar thing where you're having to create uh, parameters and the uh, conditions, okay? So like I said, I'm gonna refer you back over to NinjaTrader because they have videos. You're gonna get better customer support, support. I had to go back there several times just to watch their videos, just to learn it. I did some of that in the older best practice as well. So there's some, some details there as well regarding some of the examples, but I think it's best to spend the time there versus spend the time we have here now together. So, um, okay, so I've covered installation. I've covered indicators, the NCS itself, putting it on the screen, abbreviations, full text, uh, covered timeframes, how to change the chart, make sure the timeframes are correct on your scans as well, the market analyzer. It's, we talked about linking the chart with the market analyzer, the instrument lists, loading the instrument lists. We talked about templates, uh, having those preset pre-made so that you save yourself some time. The tabs, of course, we talked about as well and the, the ease of that. I do have one here that shows two tabs at the bottom. One is one stock Goldman Sachs. The other one was the Qs, for instance. This one, this there's the one that I had. I thought I had one open earlier that was non-abbreviated. Um, so again, if these are your favorite stocks you want to look at, it could be the indexes as, as well, easily available and accessible, or not, you know, so whatever it's linked to, if there's a link to a uh, market analyzer, for instance. So that's up to you. That's your choice, your decisions. Uh, what else is there? So um, let's see. I don't know if Paul, I'm sure Paul's out there listening. Is there anything else? I don't see really any questions per se just yet, but is there anything else? In, Paul, that I, that I missed that you think that we should be a priority before we get into some of the questions, for instance? Uh, so alerts, Steven says, can you send a text message? Uh, I, yes, I believe so, if I recall. It's not something I go back and look at very often. Um, but are you looking for the scanner, you think, Steven? Are you thinking of the chart? I guess it doesn't really matter, but um, I'm trying to think back now. Message. So text, and that's the text that you write, of course. It's triggered, it'll say, you know, blah, blah, blah shows up. Your candle shows up or whatever you're looking for. Uh, the action itself. I believe here, and see you've got play sound, share a message. And so when you click on share a message, now you've got, what do you got? It was like, what's the, what's the type? Shares to what? But you have to have services set up. So this is where back in the control center, you're gonna to need to set up, I need to close this window to get to that. So if I bring this in, you have to um, you have to set it up. I think it's here. Uh, services somewhere. There are share services right there. See it? So you've gotta set this up, okay? And then uh, then it'll be available so for you so stock twits twitter it could be whatever that's going to be something like that we have email there of course as well right so the phone i believe 
there's a means to do so. I've never done it, but again, it depends on what you're looking. If it's Twitter and it's on your phone, then it'll show up in Twitter, right? It'll do that automatically. So it depends on what what where you're trying to go. If it's truly text, SMS, for instance, um, I believe that's doable, as I recall. But yeah, again, Ninja would be a much better resource for that than I would. If it's the scanner, same thing, same principle, um, should work just fine. Uh, how do I know if the candle pattern on the chart is strict? Well, because you've chosen it, it's up to you. It's a yes or strict, right? So if I go back to indicators, I choose this is candle scanner. It says yes, so that's standard versus strict, which says strict. Not any more complicated than that. So that's the chart as well as the can the uh, market analyzer. Choices are the same. But outside of that, in terms of the definition, in terms of the abbreviation, you know, you won't know. It does doesn't change. Now, for instance, um, if you have an engulfing, you'd know like right away. So let's just say. Um, yeah, like for instance, let's if we call this, if we happen to call this a bullish engulfing, let's just call it a bullish engulfing, okay? So if you have it chosen as a strict, that's why there's no abbreviation, right? So either it's not a engulfing at all, because it doesn't fit any of the criteria, or in this case, it's not strict at all. It's one of the one of the two, right? Now a strict if you have a it's chosen a standard, it may still look like a strict, but it's still an engulfing. And engulfing is an engulfing is an engulfing. It's still engulfing the body. But if it happens to be engulfing the whole thing, well, it happens to be strict. Even though you didn't choose it, it still says engulfing. So that's how that works. Does that make sense? Okay, um, let's see. What else we got here? Um, can NCS highlight strict and non-strict candle patterns in different colors? scan well if you're using the scan then it doesn't really matter i would just probably just use two different columns like i did here right you could change no you can't change that oh maybe so hey, hang on let me think about that i never thought of that no one's ever asked me that question before so maybe if i have this but see at the bottom you'll have conditions and and filters. That's the cell condition uh, versus the filter. So you're filtering out, but also then the cell condition means that you're going to change the color. So uh, no, see this in this case, what happens when you add a condition? It's whether something shows up or doesn't show up. I mean, when it says you know the cell, in other words, the cell is you know this here. That's the cell, right? It's like a spreadsheet. So if that populates, in other words, number one, if it's a number one, it populates. So if it populates, you're going to do something, you'd say, give it a color or whatever. Well, again, you can't differentiate it populating with a strict versus a not. It's just whether it populates, period. That's all it can do. Okay. So why would that work? Well, in other words, you might have something that turns red, that turns green instead, um, whatever. You do the background versus the lettering or whatever the text may be for that matter as well. So that's about all you can do there. So the filtering, that's just gonna help you decide, hide the row or don't hide the row. That's all that is, that's how you filter it. So that's not gonna be useful, I don't think, for you there in terms of that question. So that would be a no to your question in only one using only one column. Now, you already know one is standard, one is strict. So, but you can still change the color if you want. It's up to you. But you still have two columns. So that's how I do it anyway. Uh, it's not that cumbersome. Okay, how do you set up data with TD Ameritrade? Uh, well, again, so let's go. Control center, I'm not gonna show you exactly how it's done, although I'm gonna show you where it's done. So you go in control center connections, and then you're gonna configure your connections. 
And at that point, you've also got some that are currently available in the upper left-hand corner, right? So you've got uh, TD Ameritrade, and then you're going to add that. You're going to add it to your list, and then you're going to configure those, those properties on the right-hand side, meaning that you're 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 uh, you're going to give it a name. Your username and password are going to be there as well, so that they log in automatically to your account. But there's a connection guide, as I said, on how to do that specifically. There's a little trick apparently that exists. I was trying to get somebody else set up. It used to work very easily, but now apparently they did some new little trick to it. Couldn't get it to work. He had to call support to get that little thing to work. Now it works fine, but that's how it's done. Had a quick glance, but like I said, you can always do a quick search Google to Google Ninja Trade 8 um, TD Ameritrade connection guide, and you'll see the PDF guide that comes up. You can also access it uh, from the chart included. So like when you hit the, the help menu button uh is it here i think might be here help resources or help guide let's see let's do that help guide brings up a new window and then you've got configuration connecting um uh, it's in here somewhere might be this one no it's not that one thanks to your account So those are how you do that. I know there's a where somewhere here also it connects to that exact thing as well. So look through here, you'll find it quite easily. Okay. All right, what else is there? That's it. That's the last of the question. So um okay, well, I think I've covered really pretty much what I want to cover. Uh, anything that's much more detailed, as I said, we're not going to cover now because we'll be here all night because there's a lot of detail that you can actually go through and the finer details included. So um, if there's anything that's ninja related, right, then you're going to go there. Um, keep in mind, again, I'm going to remind you that NCS is an indicator, so it doesn't have its own functionality. Configurations is all you're really looking for. So that's all going to be within NinjaTrader. So a lot of the questions sometimes for that are in are within NinjaTrader. But again, go back to the resources we already have. We have the uh, one, the installation guide, which gives some detail there on how to do things. The old former best practice video with the table of contents that will give you plenty of detail as well. Let me see. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Where is it? There it is. Is that it? This one, this one. No, this one, this one. Yep. This one, whoops. Gosh darn it. There we go. <clears throat> so in Candle Charts Academy, there, right? And your resources, there's the installation guide, there's your table of contents. So back to um, the migration, somebody had asked me earlier regarding seven to eight. So there's your migration stuff, the help guide. New charts, templates, tabs, highlighter, market analyzer, scanning, in other words, importing instrument lists, YouTube channel, all kinds of videos there. Okay, so that'll be helpful to you quickly go right to that point in that video and then get a rundown of it. All right, very good, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Uh, he might stick around here for a little bit more, but I'm going to sign off and uh, leave it to Paul at this point. So have a great night. Have a great weekend, folks. I'm going to sign off at this point. Thanks again.